Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Yes, this is Alex Bennett. You're not going to see me yet because we got a pre recorded interview coming up for about the next 25 minutes. But when we get back after that, we're going to see you're going to be able to see me. You're going to be able to see the, the uh, citizen panel. Uh, you're going to be able to see everybody. Uh, and uh, But meanwhile, we've got a guest, as we do every now and then, with one of our favorite comics from the, uh, from the West Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, every week we always call out to California, to San Francisco, to Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello from the left coast. Things are great out here. Yeah. And I think we might be in another drought, which I like. So. Wait a minute. It's winter. Yes. And they're going to have a drought again? Uh, it's been dry for a few uh, weeks, so they're starting to freak out. But you know, the more you remember drier the drier gets and more people leave. So. Do you remember the last? I mean, I was there for the last, for one of the last big droughts. I mean, there was an, there have been several since. Yeah. Um, but um, do you remember them saying that, uh, number one, if it's mellow, let it, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was to keep the, people from flushing their toilets. And yeah, somehow, you, I don't know, because of, of of my life and and the way I've lived it, I've been forced into certain things. Like for instance, if I even touch my ass, I go in and wash my hands. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It, it's not that I'm. You know, uh, what? what's the word uh, when you're germaphobic? I'm not a germaphobic, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason I do it is my mother always said, you, you, you know, you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands when you leave. So even if it's just like putting a little water on my fingertips, I have to do it. It's, it's like the reason a cat has to dig after he takes a shit, even though there's nothing to dig up, like my cat mm -hmm. who used to shit in the bathtub and try to dig up the porcelain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh where was i going with this so yeah so uh i i have these 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 habits that i have and what where was i going with that do you remember you uh you're not a germ phobe but yeah you have to... yeah yeah um i know i forgot i don't know where i was going with it what were we talking about who it would have been gold <laughs> who, who are you <laughs> identify yourself <laughs> They always say, well, go back and retrace your steps in the discussion, but I can't even do that anymore. See, our short-term memory is shot. Oh, it's gone. It's yeah. blown. You know, they have this ad on TV about a woman who has Alzheimer's, and they discover it because she left her keys in the refrigerator. Do you remember mm -hmm. that ad? <laughs> At, I think I might have done that one. <laughs> Because I keep worrying the day's going to come when all of a sudden I'm going to find the keys in the refrigerator and hope they're my wife's and not mine. <laughs> you know. Is that really a sign that? Well, I don't know that 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 law, you know memory problems are a sign of Alzheimer's. Okay, um, there are a lot of other signs, um, and uh, I, I would I don't know. I, I, don't you think, if you're going to die, wouldn't you want to die of Alzheimer's? Because yeah, because you're not going to know it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, so you know, uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm getting Alzheimer's. I don't think I am, but I, then I forget stuff like that. And people say, "Oh, well, that's just a matter of age. You do have a tendency to to forget." But I was talking about washing my hands and things you have to do when you're. Um, oh well. Forget it. It was going to be comedy gold, but I lost. We just it. missed a nugget. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 oh! Wait a minute. We were talking about the drought. Okay. Yeah. The drought. So yeah. Was... If it if it's yellow, let it mellow. mellow if it's brown, brown flush, flush it, down. it down. I'm sorry. I just couldn't leave pee in the toilet. 
because yeah. of that, you know, that the teaching when I grow up. Uh, uh, and I know it's not a bad thing. Urine is very sterile. It's, in, in fact, they say if you ever get a cut and you're out in the wilderness, pee on your hand or whatever on the sore because you have, your urine has ammonia in it or something like that. You know? Yeah, it is sterile, yeah. Yeah, it's very the most sterile uh, thing you have in your body. Uh, shit is not sterile, however, folks, yeah. and that's why you should flush it down. But the other thing they told you to do during the drought was put a brick in your toilet. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. And I tried to tell them I leave a brick in the toilet at least two or three times <laughs> a day. What was the idea of putting a brick brick in your toilet? Because it would make the flow less when displace, it fills up. Displace the water so you wouldn't flush as much. Yeah. <laughs> but now they got low flow toilets that don't do anything. So. Well, they also have low flow showers, which I hate. Well, the worst. Yeah. My, every time I get a new fl shower head, I have to call my super and he has to come in and take a certain washer out or a limiter that's in it. So that I can yeah, get, there's a baffle. I think if you take those out, you'll get a better blast of water. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, 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 what's that all about? You know. Uh, they say it's to save water. It's probably yeah. it was probably done by some some lobbyists for the companies that make shower heads. I'm guessing. I guess. And so so you uh, as of uh, yesterday, uh, 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 there's another there's another drought coming on. That's what they think. It hasn't rained for quite a while, so they're starting to freak out. Well, you know what it is also is that Southern California drinks all our water. When I say yeah, our, I used to live in Northern California. And I, that's why I've often felt that they should split that state into two states, North California least, and yeah. South mm -hmm. California. And then we should just, like, tell them, no more fucking water for you assholes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know, you brought us Harvey Weinstein. Leave us alone. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. Where is that going to end up? I don't know. You know, uh, aren't they, they dis aren't they disassembling the company now? And oh no, there's no company anymore. They've had to disassemble it mainly because it was it was going to be so rife with litigation that they they just couldn't keep it going. And then the brother. Um, Bob Weinstein, who I kind of knew because I used to go to these parties a friend of mine, Walter Sable, used to hold, and he knew Bob Weinstein and invited him to the parties. Uh, and Bob was always the quiet one. Uh, but I think they even accused him of some stuff. You know, but I don't know. I just, I'm just i just so tired of it all. Um Got to well, the point. people are getting people are getting uh, fired for just being accused now. It's like uh, I think Amazon just dumped Woody Allen. That deal they had. What the, really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. So I, I'm uh, gonna, I'm going to stop buying stuff from Amazon. You get, yeah. yeah, I don't like Amazon. Is like that they, uh, they own the world. So. Well, you know, uh, uh, look, I nobody shops more than I do for Amazon. Like I need a, a five dollar, a one dollar paper clip, and I will order it from Amazon because I'm too fucking lazy to walk down to the store. And 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 what's better than having all your stuff delivered and at a cheaper price? That's the other part of it, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an Amazon bitch. Um, I'm their bitch. And, uh, but it, what bothers me about them is a lot of businesses, a lot of family businesses are just, they can't afford to exist. They can't afford to give you those kind of prices, you know? No. And this is, uh, you would think that this would, uh, be a violation of the trust laws. Or yeah. I mean, do you, well, you, you obviously don't order from Amazon because no. getting onto the Internet, is it would take you <laughs> at least... Five days to put the order in. Put, five days to put the order in. Well. Aren't you getting tired of hearing that annoying sound when you sign on? Yeah. That, <laughs> well, I think that's a, <laughs> it's really, yeah, I got the speakers turned down. For Although that. I send you emails and you get back to me pretty fast. Yeah, I get email, email's no problem. But just any, just trying to go to a certain site, you can't 
it takes forever to open a page and forget but, no video at all. Bubs, so. for twenty bucks a month, you can get internet service these days. I wish I I don't see it around. I'm paying twenty for the dial up. I will do I will do the research of Bay Area. And, and find you a, a, a cheap, how, what are you paying? You, you're paying twenty for dial-up. Twenty for dial-up? Yeah. Hell, it, it, I'm sure you can get internet for that, but I well, think what you have to have is you have to have a cable in there, like to get Comcast. You have to have cable service. But I well, think you maybe can, you can you get. You can find out. Let me know because everything I see out here is fifty and sixty. So. Really? Yeah. yeah. And. As a pensioner, you can't afford that. Yeah, although it might be worth it just for the aggravation to stop. God, I, I am just, you know, you know what? This, and I know this sounds really silly, but I want to I wanna know when I'm going to die. <laughs> I want to know when I'm going to die because, uh, you know, I have a finite amount of money. I'm on a fixed income, and I have a finite amount of money. Now, it's enough. It's a lot. I think I can get along for many years on it, you know. But I have a finite amount of money. Uh, and when the stock market went out last week, went bad last week, I lost almost $5,000. Okay? So anyway, but then again, here was the thing my business manager, Gary, told me. He said, "If I at last year, your money was worth X number of amount." And right now, even with this crash, it's worth about eight thousand more. If I told you it was, or, uh, yeah, eight thousand dollars more. If I had told you that a year ago, you that it would be that much, you would have been happy. Yeah. You know, so you can't really cry over the fact that you had all this money. Now it's no longer there. But anyway, uh, uh, if I knew when I was going to die. I could then apportion my money accurately. Like if I knew, oh, hey, Alex, you, you, sorry, but pal, you're going to die next year. Hey, I'm I'm taking all that money and I'm go, taking a trip around the world and I'm going to exactly. spend it like crazy and I'm going to get the biggest screen TV you ever saw in your life, and I'm you know I'm just going to go spend. But instead, I'm oh gee, should I spend that twenty three dollars at Amazon or not? Because I don't know when I'm going to die. But I would hate then, to die and leave anything behind. Yeah, you want to leave like a roll of nickels. That's about it. Yeah, although I, 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 I do have a will, and my wife gets everything. Guess who made out the will? <laughs> I'll see. You know. Uh, <laughs> she could be a very wealthy lady. Not for my money, but she has... She bought, she bought, you know, you, sometimes you live in an apartment, all of a sudden, they say, hey, we're going condo in this building. Do you want to buy your apartment? Well, you like your apartment. You go, sure, I'll, I'll buy it, right? How much? And they say, well, there's an insider's price. And the insider's price, I think, on hers was like $125,000, $150,000. Wow. It's a one-bedroom, small one-bedroom apartment. So she said, oh, what the fuck? And she bought it, Right. And now she's almost got it paid off for because she's doubled the payment. She wanted to get it paid off within a couple of years. All of a sudden, that apartment retail value is anywhere from four hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's great. So that's our annuity for when we get old. That's the you annuity, know, if worse yeah. comes to worse, we sell the apartment. Well, have you have you ever known anyone that was older and they were like running out of money? That must be a horrifying. Place well, to be. Well, you know, I mean, I feel that way, uh, but I'm not running out of money yet. I would think a lot of people in show business wind up like that. Who did I see? Oh, you know, you know who? Um, oh, this 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 one will get you. I saw a thing. They were running this thing on Patty Hearst, on the kidnapping of Patty Hearst. And uh, oh, I just read a book about that. Yeah, well, uh, and uh, of course, her, who was her attorney when she got caught, and then she had to get. The least possible sentence. I think it was F. Lee Bailey. Yeah, absolutely correct. And who was O.J. Simpson's lawyer? F. Lee Bailey. Yeah. Where is F. Lee Bailey today? Uh, he got into some problem, and I, yes. I heard he was long, almost, was he disbarred? He was, he was disbarred, yes. 
He was living up in Maine in a small office. He, he's living up in Maine with his girlfriend. Who you know? I don't know what age the girlfriend is, and he is broke. He doesn't have totally a penny. Broke. Wow. Totally broke. Doesn't have a penny to his name. This was one of the most successful lawyers in America, ladies and gentlemen. I think he used to fly his own jet around. To, uh... He had a TV show. Remember Lie Detector? Lie Detector. Yeah, you know who worked on that show? David Feldman. David Feldman worked on that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had a TV show. He was OJ's one of OJ's dream team. He was. Uh, a Patty Hearst lawyer, not a particularly good one because she got seven years in prison, although she only served two of them before she was pardoned by, by I think, uh, was it Clinton? Yeah, and then Obama. No, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. And then was it Clinton or Obama who gave her the full pardon? I think it was Clinton. It was Clinton. Okay. Anyway, so she, but but he he, he didn't really get her off the hook. She he got She got some jail time, so. She did, and yeah. then, uh, let's see, Bailey was, the famous case that made him was the, uh, going way back, was the Sam Shepard case. Yes. That yeah. no one remembers but you and me. But. Was he involved at all in the, uh, what was the one up in um, up in Boston, the Boston Strangler? I think he might have been involved. That seems very familiar. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, you know, um, F. Lee Bailey broke, ladies and gentlemen, not a penny to his fucking name. Well, how did he get disbarred? Uh, that I don't remember. There was some something, I don't know, he spent some money he wasn't supposed to or something. I can't remember. I can look it up here. See, okay. I have an Internet that is so fast that, that, <laughs> yeah. that it would, it would, uh, your retina would detach uh, watching it. Um, <laughs> F. Lee. All you have to put is F. Lee, and the next thing you know, it comes up is Bailey. Okay, and now it comes up. Uh, F. Lee Bailey, Wikipedia. Okay, and then it had his television career. There's maybe Patty Hearst. On the back, O.J. Simpson. Uh, let's see. Korean Airlines flight to Luzon, Paul is dead. Bailey was featured in a special in which he conducted a mock trial examining various expert witnesses on the subject of Paul is dead rumor. Uh, drunk driving case in California. Oh, disbarment. Bailey's highly public profile has come both as a result of cases taken. I was disbarred in the state of Florida where the reciprocal uh, disbarment in Massachusetts on April 11, 2003, the Florida disbarment was the result of handling of shares in a pharmaceutical company named Blachem Pharma during his representation of marijuana dealer Claude Dubac. Bailey had transferred a large portion of Dubac's assets into his own accounts. The stock was worth about $5.9 million and was supposed to be included in the forfeiture of assets that Dubach had to make as a plea bargain. It had been held by Bailey because he, it, it would be sold immediately if it came to government possession, but it was expected. To, so I guess that's what he was disbarred for. Wow. Yeah. So uh, he's done. Disbarment in 2003. So, he, and then application to practice law in the state of Maine. Uh, uh, Bailey passed the Maine bar examination and applied for a law license. The Maine board bar examiners voted five to four to deny this application. So he couldn't even get himself a you know a, a legal degree in in Maine. Does anybody That's care nice. about this, folks? Do any of you remember? <laughs> I F. think it's Lee? kind of interesting. <laughs> well, of course, I find it interesting because I know who F. Lee Bailey is. But how much? Yeah. Of our, how much of our he audience, was... do you figure, to this day knows who F. Lee Bailey is? Or was? Uh, let's see. You'd have to be you. The last thing would be the O.J. trial. So that's over twenty years ago. That, so. That's the last thing that he really made yeah. a splash on. And he was only one of the dream team. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, the Kardashian, Shapiro, yeah, uh, Johnny Cochran, yep, yep. Uh, they're all, uh, they're uh, all dead now. <laughs> Barry Sheck, 
Barry Jack, Schick, yeah, to, uh, who, who, who has redeemed himself many times over, you know, with his Innocence Project and all of that. Yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, but Barry Sheck was part of that dream team. He he was he simply testified as uh, an expert wis- witness on DNA, mm. uh, which he was very good at. Um, but um, how do you feel about OJ? You know, they, there's rumors now that uh, who is going to oh uh, Borat, um, the guy who plays Borat, is going to put him in his next movie. Or already has shot him in his next movie, really? and paid him twenty thousand dollars to do it. I think O.J. was. Uh, I think he got. He served a pretty long sentence for that thing that happened in Nevada, which yeah. I think was. That was like punishment for because they didn't get him for the murder, right? right. Which I don't find uh, that really is not good justice, is it? No, it was terrible justice. You know. I mean, let's face it, folks, he was found not guilty in a court of law. Now, whether you agree with the decision or not, he was found not guilty. Period. That's it. Goodbye. See you later. Um, they say, oh, well, they had that, uh, that other trial. You know, well, that was a, uh, uh, that was a trial about his, his culpability in the matter. And it wasn't like you didn't have to, have to have the same preponderance of evidence in one of those cases uh, that you had to have in uh, in the in the uh, legal case, but I feel that a a jury found him not guilty, and so therefore, whether no matter what you believe about him, you have to let him life live his life as a not guilty person. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, none of his rights are forfeited or anything like that. But yet there were people who go, oh no, he was guilty. He was guilty. He was guilty. No, he wasn't. He was found. Not guilty. They say they didn't find him innocent. I go, it's not guilty is pretty much a not innocent. You know, not guilty plea. Uh, And uh, I just felt that what they did in Nevada was anybody else who did that would not get that kind of fine. They probably would have gotten like maybe six months or something, and I think he got like nine years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grossly unfair. Um, Yeah, and it was all because of that. Yeah, and you said, well, of course it was fair because he killed his wife. No, it didn't, has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. It has absolutely nothing to do with it, you know. We, we, we have laws. You go to trial. If you're found not guilty, you're not guilty, all right? So you don't then say, oh, uh, you uh, you got a traffic ticket here. and You're going to have to pay $10 million because you killed your wife and was found not guilty, you know. I, I, I just I, I found that I found that really terrible. But anyway, so so now he's going to make twenty thousand dollars, right, for doing the movie with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, and I bet you the Goldmans are there with their hand out. Come on! Oh we're, yeah, they'll probably uh, intercept that, right? Yeah, we're owed the money. They so, got a judgment. So. so really, you know, OJ doesn't have to work another day in his life because if he does, he's not going to make anything for it. You know, right. And Although they can't touch his pension, but they can't. No, they can't touch his pension, which is what did I read? Forty thousand a year, something like that. And they can't touch. There are a couple of other things they can't touch. And so he has, you know, he has money coming in. You know, he can live a pretty good life. I wish I had forty thousand. I think it's more than forty thousand. No, I think it's like forty thousand a month. It's, it's like twenty thousand a month. I think is what I read. Yeah, okay. some something like that. So, yeah. I mean, you know, they can't touch that. So uh, he's in good shape. He doesn't need the 20000 from Borat. He just wants to do the movie, you know. Uh, and and what, what are the Goldmans going to do? Have their hand out for every piddly payment he gets for something? Hey, you just got a refund for taxes. Oh, we want the money. Hey! <laughs> the biggest asshole I ever interviewed was Fred Goldman. <laughs> yeah, I, in the middle of the interview, I was on the phone. I said, "You know the thing that bothers me about you?" Because he was he was talking about passing laws which really went against our presumption of innocence and things like that. I said, "The thing that bothers me about you," and I didn't even get to the point. He says, "Something about me bothers you?" And I said, "Yes," and he hung up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Real, real, real prick. 
Anyway, yeah, I know his son is dead, but that doesn't make you any less a prick because your kid got killed. Okay? <laughs> you know, and who knows what that was all about. There's part of me to this day that says there is a slight possibility O.J. didn't do it. You know? Uh, and uh, that, uh, you know, because there was... It could have been a drug deal gone bad. Who knows? You know, there are a lot of other possibilities, but we don't look at those. We want to say, oh, it's O.J. who did it, right? Mm -hmm. Why did he run? Well, who knows why he ran? That is, That doesn't make you guilty either. Anyway, hey, listen, another wonderful 25 minutes, you know, it goes by without me even having to spend time wondering how much time we're spending. I That's just looked great. down at the clock and it says 2450 and counting down towards 25. Okay? Oh. And that's it for Perfect. Larry Bubbles Brown. We'll see you next time, Larry. Sounds good, buddy. Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and that was Larry Bubbles Brown. And I love Larry because he, well, you know, I could talk for a half hour, which I do on many an occasion, uh, and I can talk for a half hour and uh, 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 keep you entertained. But I could also spend that half hour talking to you, but via someone else who I'm bouncing stuff off of, and there's nobody better than Larry. I just really love Larry. And by the way, if you ever, if you want to see Larry, he and um, uh, Will Durst are in a film that is on, uh, on Amazon Prime right now called Three Still Standing. The other one happens to be uh, Johnny Steele, a guy I don't particularly care for. But two out of the three people are people I deeply adore and uh, respect. And uh, you might want to might wanna see it. Hey, listen, the lines are open. Let me clear a few things here, though, first. Oh, there. He wants to be accepted. Okay, we'll do that. Douglas Green, if you're out there, you have just been accepted, uh, which, which is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Uh, I'm just clearing out uh, the flotsam and the jetsam from my uh, previous shows here of all the callers. There we go. And, and uh, Douglas Green, in fact, is online, so I hope he decides to call the program tonight. But now it's your turn to call this show. See, it says on the air up there, okay? We take that seriously. And you should, too. Uh, and all you got to do is uh, give me a call, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you about what's going on in the world. If you don't know how to do that, go over to gabnet.net. You won't even miss any part of the show if you're watching it because the video is running over there, too. But gabnet.net. And uh, on the right-hand side, there's a whole tutorial on how to get uh, uh, on Skype and how to get it and where to get it and how to set it up and all of that. And it's very simple and it's no big deal. And then you can be calling us and talking to us just like a lot of other people do. But anyway, it's time now for people to call. And I sit here ad-libbing for a couple of minutes waiting for people to call because a lot of them don't know it's time to call since the show runs about hmm, 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds behind. So when I start saying, hey, the lines are open and uh, nobody hears that for about 45 seconds and then they got to go to their computer and set it up and so on. So I am now waiting for, uh, for people to call this program. Uh, this is a thing we do where we have a thing called a citizen panel. That's not just one person, but there's somewhere up to like nine or ten other people. Ah, here comes one of them now. You'll see how easy it is. Here's, here's, here's a guy who is old enough to not be able to do this, but he does it anyway. And his name is Jeff Stein. And I see that also uh, Phil Meyer is coming online. So there we have like two portions of a citizen panel. Uh, this is not a royal flush, is it? This is a, um, what, what, can we have a name for this, Phil? Can you come up with a card term for just two people calling A deuce. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a deuce. Uh, a pair. A pair. Yeah. a pair. It's something like that. Anyway. So how are, how are you all doing tonight? Good. Yeah. I'm finally back home. Wait, wait, now, where were you? You were in Florida, right? I was in Florida uh, for a week. Yeah. And and then I I spent uh, almost 
I would say half a week uh, in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. So you yeah. you've been you've been traveling around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why? That's nice. That's I got I, I to stop doing this thing for a couple of weeks and go take the wife somewhere on vacation. We haven't done one in about four years. And uh, I mean, I don't know where we'll go, uh, but uh, we've been thinking we've, we've been thinking Spain, maybe. Yeah, someplace yeah. warm. Someplace warm. It's not warm. Doesn't it doesn't matter to me whether it's warm or it's cold. What matters is, is that it, the food is terrific. <laughs> you know, you go oh. places where the food is terrific. You go to Spain, the food is terrific. You yeah, go to Italy, the food is terrific. You go to England, eh, not so much. <laughs> you know, they uh, go to Argentina. The food is good. It, really? Yeah. Same yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I think uh, I have never been to South America. You never. Uh, uh, I, no. I, the, the closest I've been to South America is we went to Belize. I guess that is South America. Actually, that's not really Central America. Huh? Yeah. Central America. Uh, it's Central America. I dated Central a America. Brazilian, but yeah. that's that's as close as I got. <laughs> uh, 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 you mean she had all her hair removed from her crotch? Uh, no, yeah. yeah. Brazilian, you get it, folks? <laughs> this one was wild. That was the joke. Yeah. yeah. She was no, wild. wild. Was she? Yeah. Really? How long ago was that? Uh, 2003. No, really? Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Uh, you know, she, uh, uh, she spoke, uh, French. She was in a circus in Europe. Uh, she was a pretty neat person. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, everybody else start calling as well. Let me, let me ask you a question. Has this ever happened to you? Of course it's happened to you. You go to the pharmacy and there's some idiot behind the counter. And they go to look for your, your, your drugs, and you ever notice how they're like packages and packages and packages and packages? Do, do you go to places like that where they've got like this shelf with packages and, and they got to sure. go find them? No, the pharmacy that I go to, they enter a number, and all of a sudden there's like a, a conveyor belt of stuff, and it just uh, a little really? box shows up. Really? Well, in mine, uh, this is like CVS, and they've. Just got like this. It's like a rack of drugs, okay? And it's all yeah. everybody's prescriptions in, in, you know, packaged up and everything and waiting for them. And then they have to go find them. And they're in there. You have a question at a CVS and you ask the pharmacist, you know, they ignore you. They, I, I thought it was just me, but obviously it's you too. Well, you know, all I know just, is this girl couldn't find my drugs. And I had just, they had just been placed in there within hours i mean there was one that was yesterday that was filled yesterday and that one she found immediately the other one i can't find it i don't know where it is i mean it was right in front of her somewhere but uh i, I must have waited 10 15 minutes for her to potchke around and find the fucking drugs just well, she had the, a break coming hmm? see they have a break coming i have a feeling she was new to the job yeah. And she hadn't done the job before. And so that's why that's why I had to go through all of this. And I was kind of wanting to get my drugs because they after the first of the month, I can't use that uh, that drugstore anymore because I'm on a new health plan, okay? And so I wanted her to finish looking for it before the first of the month so I could get my drugs. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was ridiculous, you know. Anyway, that was my that was my big day. That was my that was my excitement for the day. And then yesterday it was beautiful. It was gorgeous here in New York. Uh, it was just breathtakingly. You, what did you say? Huh? What, uh, he's talking to somebody. Uh, he's talking uh, to somebody else. Oh, okay. Well, you're on the way. Is that a, is that an intercom you have? No, no. Is that an intercom you have, Jeff? No, no. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, just my wife came by. Oh, she came by. I see because you're kind of like you're, you're choppy, a little choppy tonight for some reason. I well, I, I, yeah, I didn't put the the earplugs and stuff on. I don't know why. But. Yeah, but it's not the earplugs. It's <laughs> like it's difference. like your picture is a little, but you get a little oh, really? frozen every now and then. Dishes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens. You know, um, it, it. You know. What can I say? Uh, you, Somebody watching Netflix yeah. uh, while you're uh, in here. We, we've had people that were 
uh, sharing their bandwidth with other people in the uh, in the house. Yeah, uh, remember well, Dave uh, Shuck uh, oh, was Dave always Shuck. having an issue. Yeah, he had kids who used played video games or something or watched Netflix, and <laughs> and, and so he didn't get a, a completely good picture uh, going. Ah, yeah. uh, here comes uh, here comes Patrick. What in back of you? You've got a Bob Rubin picture, a poster, or something. Yes, yes that's the uh, that's the one from his uh, from his uh, thing. From what thing? Uh, when he had uh, oh. when he had that show. Oh, I see. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I finally I finally found a uh, a mat uh, that was the right size. Oh, see, I uh, I haven't uh, talked to him since uh, I talked to him. Once, I think, since he did that show. And I don't know if, whether he's been able to sell it or not, you know. Yeah. He's not, he's not the most... I saw him uh, in December, I think, at the Throckmorton. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, when, when uh, John Means was there. Yeah. And uh, he, was, uh, he was appearing as well. And so I, I got to talk to him for a few few minutes in the back. Yeah, I got to I got to I got to give him a call. We we stopped doing the interviews with him because uh, he couldn't get his Skype working, and then he was also being evicted or something, and it was just all kinds of things that made it kind of impossible for us to 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 you know get the whole thing going. What happened to Jeff? He disappeared. Uh, he just walked off to the side. He probably he probably no he probably went off to get his earphones. Hello, Patrick. How are you this evening? Just fabulous. You're ne you're, you never, I, whenever I ask you that question, you never say, listen, I'm in a fucking wheelchair. I'm fucked up. What? You know, don't ask me how I am. How can I be? No, you always go fabulous, peachy, wonderful. You always have some kind of really exuberant uh, description of how you're feeling. I've got kidney stones. You got kidney stones again? Yeah, I just, I just got rid of the one in May. Yeah. And I... The doctor uh, yesterday, and uh, it looks like I have stones again. Oh. Hey, you know, we're always telling me you got some. Turn, set turn of your stones. mic. Turn your mic down a little bit. You're you over really over modulated. Yeah, I mean, you were just very loud. For Patrick, you were very loud. No, he can, oh. he can hear you. You don't have to yell uh -huh. at him. Oh, you turned it up for Patrick. He's a gimp. His, he can, but he can hear. You know, no, 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 it wasn't that. It was he. His voice was low. Yeah. And you turn the board up, so you know, it, now uh, uh, you know. Well, his my, voice my is a little low in the beginning, and then for some reason, I, I don't know if you've still got that thing turned the way I told you you should turn it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, if, in the beginning you're very low, and then all of a sudden you're you're just fine. Anyway, um, so uh, let me see. So uh, so you were in Florida. Uh, were you in Florida, by the way, Jeff, when the whole incident happened? I sure was. What was the reaction? I mean, we've had people on here. One guy from Florida. We had Mark, for right. instance, Thorner right. as well. Uh, one guy who lives five minutes from the school. Okay, uh, but you know, what was what was the feeling down there? Because it becomes very. The closer you are to the epicenter of an incident like yeah. that, the more visceral it becomes. Well, we were we were on the other side of. Uh, of the lake, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, instead of being on the east coast, we were on the, the west right side of uh, Florida and uh, in Tampa yeah. area. Yeah. Um, you know, I get a, a sense that people didn't want to talk about it too much. Really? Yeah. It, I think they're a little terrified. Did yeah. you hear about the sheriff? That was yes, a, a yes. Sweep. We heard about it. Well, it, it, yeah, we we don't know the full facts on it yet. However, well, but uh, you know, was there? Oh, this is this was a a member of the sheriff's department whose job was to patrol the school. And while the shooting was going on, he was standing outside and did not go inside to do anything. And he was armed. And he was armed. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> their their protocol. Yeah. was if the shooting starts, you go in, you don't wait for SWAT, you don't do anything, you just go in and you engage. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, he waited outside, never even drew his weapon. Wow. How? Uh, well, he must have been aware something was going on inside. I would uh, imagine you would hear uh, that kind sheriff, of gunfire. Sheriff Israel, yeah. who was sheriff, I think, of Broward County, mm -hmm. uh, 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 said 
that uh, he, yes, he was aware. And now he, uh, not only was the guy suspended, but the guy resigned. Uh, Do you know uh, how many to, years he was with the force? Oh, uh, no. 33 years. Wow. Hmm. You know, and what incident like this, he's out the door. He probably loses his pension. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't think he can lose his pension. Yeah, but uh, geez, I but, mean, it's just, you know, I mean, uh, that, that's terrible. But, you know, okay, there was somebody with a gun. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> you know. <case. laughs> In that case, no. you know, although uh, President Trump wants to uh, arm teachers, uh, give them additional pay uh, if yeah. they're willing to yeah. carry it. Absolutely the most idiotic idea I've ever heard of in my life. Teachers aren't wild about it. The teachers and aren't wild about it, and neither are. There was one parent I saw today uh, who said uh, if, a teacher's had, if a teacher had a gun in that incident, there would have been more students killed because there'd be more bullets flying around. Not necessarily. Well, not no, no. Don't don't use the word not necessarily. If, if, if you, That's not a guarantee of anything. Look, if you are properly trained, you don't fire until you're sure no, of it, what's uh, behind. You, you, you're behind talking. You're talking about arming. What is it? Well, they say thirty six hundred teachers in this country. If only if you only do like twenty percent of them, okay, mm -hmm. and and you have to train all those and expect that every one of them are going to take that training seriously. Well, uh, he was talking about training uh, uh, ex-Marines. Uh, hold on a second. Kevin's got to turn his thing off here. I'm getting there, sorry. Yeah, he's getting there. Yeah, uh, yeah he was talking about char uh, training uh, and, and giving them to people who were prior, prior in the military, uh, Marines, Air, Air Force. No, people he was talking about, uh, you know, he, was, he mentioned... Any teacher who wanted to take the training and they would get... And who's going to pay that extra bonus? The school districts are not very wealthy, you know? I mean, well, the whole idea is a stupid idea by a stupid man to solve a very complex problem. Don't, don't they pay for uh, security now? Uh, uh, yeah, they pay, they pay for a certain amount of security, yes. But uh, I just think that uh, the idea... Why don't we arm all the students, too? That's a good idea. Every student should have a I gun. Heard coach. You know. There was a coach at that school that protected the kids and, uh, and was shot and killed. Well, because he used his own body as protection. Exactly. Wouldn't he have been better off if he had a gun? No. No, I, I don't agree with uh, that. Well, it, it, Ke no. Kevin agree disagrees with you. Go ahead, Kevin. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I got a list here of the drugs I want to take. Uh, no, 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 so wait a minute. Hold on a second. We'll get to your little joke in a second. I've, Kevin, <laughs> uh, what were you going to say about that? Would that have been better with Crossfire? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah it would have been really good with Crossfire. Well, you know, Phil, I, 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 I you know, kind of get what you're saying, but I don't think it's a good idea. The teachers, personally, you know, I look at some of the teachers that uh, at the school my daughter goes, I look at the teachers of my my. Uh, daughter went to and I, I look at them and I go okay a gun in that person's hand and I can see one person out of the two schools that my daughter went to that might would be capable of handling a gun and I don't think that's a good idea one person and I, I don't think you're going to find that many teachers that will be willing to not only willing to handle a gun, mm -hmm. but would want to, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's set up for, uh, the SROs that are supposed to be there. There should be more SROs. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean uh, by SRO? What is it? People, what is that? Uh, it's a, uh, uh, a security special resource officer. Oh, okay. That's a, it's a police officer that the police put in place, but that's money. And, and, you know, I don't know where they're going to get the money because we play hell trying to get one SRO to roam between four or five different schools. Isn't it sad here. we have to even be talking about hiring a guard for schools? You know, I mean, this is just... You know, you can't hire a guard for school because they're yeah. typically, you know, off-duty, off you know, security officers and things like they're that. They're rent-a-cops, basically. Yeah, yeah. you got to... You gotta, Unfortunately, it's come down to I, what I think you have to do is fortify the damn schools. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Uh, my high school, many, many years ago, 
after I graduated, they installed metal detectors. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, I think that should be standard for every school because, no, it's not going to stop everything. However, if you only have <clears throat> two entrances, let's say, to a school, and there, somebody there, uh, because there is a sign-in desk. I remember I went back and visited my high school, and I had to go through security procedures to get into the damn school that I used to go to. Now, I understand anybody can get into anything if they want to, but it's just like a bank or anything else. The metal detector will at least be a deterrent for some. And even if they do get through, if the metal detector goes off, if you've got security within the school, they know mm -hmm. where the problem is immediately. Yeah. And this guy, the the by the way, let me let me just let me just say we've been joined by uh, by on, not only Ray Renati. Hello, Ray. Good evening again. Hey. Great to have That's you cool. here. And and Tony, uh, yeah. who thinks that uh, Jerry Falwell just died. I got the wrong preacher. I thought it was the guy. Yeah. Well, who... and he puts a thing on my Facebook page that says, "Hooray, <laughs> Jerry Falwell is dead." I got him confused. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Falwell died years ago. Was that the guy you hated? That guy or no? I I, I hate all those guy. preachers. I hate yeah, all no, those 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 assholes who try and fleece their flock. Alex is going to be happy. He's dead. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I think I think the the terrible part about Billy Graham is he lived too long. You know, yeah, I, Alex, I saw old pictures. You look crazy. Like he was <laughs> really into it. Like yeah, well, he was oh, into yeah. it. He, <laughs> he counseled yeah. twelve presidents. Really? And, uh, and look and where we and look Trump. where we are today. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Alex, you happy? He's dead. <laughs> hey, uh, so, you know, I understand, Kevin, what you're saying. That you know, uh, but I also look at, let's say, airline pilots. Airline pilots, <clears throat> uh, many of them uh, are carrying <clears throat> weapons uh, and uh, have received that training. Uh, right. But uh, you know, I remember. Uh, you know, I got on tonight, and I was going to take. Oh, well, let me uh, ask you. Let me uh, ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Forget your uh, list of drugs, okay? And, uh, and uh, it's the guns. It's the, the guns. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, you, you talk about you know pilots carry the guns with them. How many? How many pilots have had to use that gun to stop an incident? I don't know. Zero. Very well, zero. Maybe, zero. Maybe that kids wouldn't come onto the campuses if they knew they got some resistance. But Listen, they if, a kid, if a kid has a death which he doesn't give a shit, and no, if the guard is at the front door, he shoots him first. It's not gonna, he's not going to get any resistance. Oh. They're all bragging about oh, gun-free zones. Is, uh, so yep. I, say, I say we let every student have a gun. That way, nobody will try to start up. And when they do, well, okay, so we lose a couple of hundred. You know, yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh. Can I call you right back? My mother needs me for one second. I have to go upstairs. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> call us right I'll be back. Yeah. Upstairs. Yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta give her a food. Hey, you Tony. Want a ball pass? I gotta give her a banana. She wants. Bananas. We don't believe She's crazy. I'm oh, well, go give her a banana, but you don't have to hang up. Just go well, give I'm her a use banana. My laptop. I have my laptop upstairs because I shop for her. Hey, uh, no. you want to hold? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Just hang on. Tony out. doesn't have a mother. He's lying. Give him a hall pass. <laughs> All he wants to do is take a pee, but he's he's blaming it on his mother. He's blaming it on his mother, exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, where where it's where, the where, guns? It's the guns. Come on, I'm that trying guns. to Look I'm at trying that. to move this person from the group, <laughs> but I can't. They, underneath or on top. Bill. Underneath they or on top? Hang, they, hang. <laughs> they hang. Remove this person from group, and it won't remove Tony. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's gone on my screen. Huh? That's, it's gone on Yeah, screen. it's not gone on, on this one. Well, everybody, you can just look at that. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, but it's not, uh, for some reason, it didn't disappear here. So, everybody, just ignore the guy who wants cookies over on the side of the page call failed okay maybe now i can remove him <coughs> from the group there we go okay uh, technology ain't it wonderful uh so um 
Well, uh, Ray, uh, yeah. you, you, would you like to chime in on this whole thing? Uh, we're talking about the fact that Trump says that we should arm teachers. <laughs> I think it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, uh, I heard a teacher on uh, the radio the other day. <laughs> She's like, it's like a hundred pound woman teaches English. She couldn't even imagine carrying a gun. It's she it was just ridiculous to her. Yeah. Um, but wouldn't she do it for the bonus she was going to get for carrying the gun? <laughs> you know. Can you imagine your teachers packing? I guess. I break? guess you know something. I, you know, I think they're under enough stress as it is. And can you imagine? You know, the way these kids. If you've ever been in a classroom these yeah. days, these kids are just a little bit, a little bit mouthy these days, and and yeah. they get enough stress as it is. And one of these kids comes at the teacher, and the the teacher just decides, you know, one day, you know, I'm packing. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> yeah, what, what, ha what, ha what happens to the first teacher who goes postal? Okay, yeah, try and you try and explain stress. your way you out of that paid. one. You yes, don't need to be packing. Patrick, isn't a reason enough to let them pass so you can start eliminating some of these little fuckers? <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna fuck with a teacher who's packing heat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, whoa. but when I heard that today, you know, that this was his solution to the problem. That's what he got out of that meeting the other day. Yeah. Where, incidentally, you know, it was, it was incidentally he, had, I, he, had, he had notes on there. He had notes he was reading from, and the one on the very bottom said, I hear you. That yeah, was a, that was a talking that. I point. I hear you. you. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Why don't we just get rid of the... Figure, yeah. Why are we going? Why are we doing it the hard way? Just get. Don't let people buy these damn assault weapons. But instead, we're going to give all these teachers guns and train them and put metal detectors, instead of just doing the obvious logical thing. And getting rid of the gun. And getting rid of the guns. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just so obvious. Uh, and, and we're not. We're I mean, not. We're not talking about your little pistolas, folks. We're talking about those AK-47s. I mean, nobody has a need for that. You're not even going to go hunting with one of those things, Patrick. Well, if you eliminate the AR-15s and the AK-47. What do you think your next logical step is for mass shooting? It's a Glock, or it's a it's a uh, Desert Eagle, or we'll eliminate those two. Well, I mean, you can't. I don't believe in eliminating any of it. I think it's a matter of forcing the gun laws. It's a matter of uh, beefing up the background checks. I mean, I myself, personally, I want an AR-15. Why? Because I fucking want one. I like the way it looks. I think it's a cool weapon, and I would go shooting with it. And it's not illegal to have one. However, do I need it today? No, I would be willing to, if I'm going to buy it, wait, you know, if they say 20 days or 30 days, whatever it is, that's fine. It doesn't matter to me because I'm not out there gunning for somebody. It, it's a matter of it's a collector's item for me. Um, you know, I mean... If you want a collector's item, you can have a collector's item that's been, uh, been made so it can't shoot. Well, I can pull the fire pin if you want, but the point is, um, if you extend the background checks and, and that, you're going to eliminate a lot of this stuff. But didn't we, didn't we talk? Let me Children ask you. are being killed, people. Yeah. Children are being killed. I have a high school son. He's not going to school. He's afraid to go to school. Really? What the hell? Yeah. This is ridiculous. Children are being shot in schools with these guns. Oh, but we have to have You know, the one place, I, I, said like the, I said this the other night, the one place that you felt you could leave your kid off where he was going to be safe all day was the school. And now that's not in the cards. Uh, I think, I think you know, what you're saying, Ray, is, is very relevant here because you're a parent and you fear this. Yes. Um, the point is that we before we have talked about background checks and we have said oh we're going to do background checks we talked about this whole this whole discussion has gone on before and yet when we finally did something none of those things fell into place in any meaningful way so that's the problem because there's no consistency in the background checks yeah there's and no 
there's no consistency in how you buy a gun. And, this is you know, good. I, I, I get what I get what 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 Patrick is saying, and I I get what you're saying. I, I've got a kid too, and, and I understand what. Both well, you you broke my heart the other night when you said you you have a daughter goes to school and you're afraid have, to send her I, to I, school. I've got day. the same fear that Ray has. I've got the exact same fear. I don't know what the answer is. We're not going to get rid of the guns. There's no way. It's the people with the finger on the trigger. That's yeah. what it what, you, what's you, causing the whole thing. The says, one thing that the one one of those one second, Phil. The one thing the one kid said that really hit me hard in that room with with Trumpy boy was that kid that was 15 years old said I don't know what it's I'm 15 years old and I don't know what it's like to not go to school without violence that hit me hard yeah. because when I went to school I didn't have to worry about it I worried about getting in a fight this kid had to worry about guns and he he's he was born into this shit well, the only thing I had to worry about when I was going to school in the, in the area of violence was the, was the kid who would say to you, "Wait till after school, I'm going to beat you exactly. up." Exactly, and I, you, you know, know. I, I'd get into you know, we're going to meet you at the garbage cans. We're going to we're going to take a, we're going to take you out. You know, we're going to yeah. fight. So I wouldn't go by the garbage cans. I'd go the yeah, other exactly. way and go home as fast as I could. Now I got to worry about my kid, and she's not even in high school yet. Yeah, hey, Trump has been saying that he wants to do extreme vetting on immigrants. Now, this is good practice. If he does extreme vetting on uh, on buying a gun uh, to the U.S. citizens, this isn't such a bad idea. You can see how good he's going to be at extreme vetting if uh, if he's going to uh, go through more. I don't know what he. I don't know what he's so worried. I don't know what he's worried about immigrants. We're doing a good enough job of killing ourselves. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. It's the guns. It's the guns. But I understand, and I you know, it's the guns. Well, the guns but, uh, don't shoot themselves, though, Phil. The guns yeah, don't shoot yeah, themselves. No, they do shoot themselves. It's the guns, you know. No, because all... because it's the vetting. It's the, the, you go to buy a gun, and yeah. I saw the process today. And the worst yeah, process race is, me, is race almost, hold on. It's almost ten days, right? Yeah. You go through. Yeah. You go buy a gun. It sits on the desk. You go yeah. to get a gun. It they they do a a three day check, and you run you through three different processes. You go through three different agencies, mm -hmm. and if you don't get uh, stopped within three agencies for mm -hmm. mental, for a federal okay. check, and another check, and nothing comes back, then you get the gun. Within well, 10 I, days, you can I, have the gun. And I that's bullshit. Be you should, be, you should but, get... Yeah. That's only if nothing comes back. Then if something, little blip comes back, then you get checked. But if little blip comes back and... They don't check it out. You still get the freaking gun. That's bullshit. That's yeah. how those the guy in Texas got his gun, and that's how uh, I don't the, want the other guy in uh, before that got the gun. Phil, want, if, if Patrick's got, got his happens, hand up, that's when it should stop. Not yep. Patrick's not got his going. Patrick's got his hand up. The, the one thing that I heard from the uh, sheriff last night in Howard County was. Um, it was a little blip, a little clip that um, somebody like who has a restraining order against them, um, that sort of thing, or if they've got any felony, um, should not be allowed to have a weapon. And I agree with that. And I know, Alex, this is where you may disagree a little bit um, in that I know that you believe once you've served your time in prison, and you're out, uh, you should be given a second chance. I agree with all of that, except with weapons. If you are in prison for any sort of violent crime, you don't get anything. Well, you now, know, if you've spent if, if you if you've spent time in prison, uh, by the way, Tony, you don't have your camera on. Oh. I'm having to look some stupid fucking muppets. Um, uh, you know, uh, and I would, yes, uh, maybe the Muppets would look better than Tony. I don't know. But anyway, uh, 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 I, I know what you're saying, um, Patrick, and I, I get your point. When you uh, are uh, sent to prison and you serve your time, when you get out, I don't think you can vote. Uh, the voting, the right to vote has been stripped from you. 
uh, for, I guess for certain things, I mean, if it's more than a certain amount of time that you're in prison, if you're in for a year or so, you're... Or if you're a registered Democrat. If you're a registered Democrat, right, right, <laughs> right. Or if you're a Russian. Anyway, uh, uh, so so I, I would not disagree with saying that, hey, especially if you committed your crime with a weapon, that you should not be allowed to buy one. For any part of it. For, yeah. Or be possession of one. However, if all of your rights are fully restored, constitutional rights are fully restored, then I suppose you have the right to have a gun. Well, that's the thing. And, that, and that's where I think what that sheriff was saying made a lot of sense, that if you've even got a restraining order against you, I think that you should have to surrender your weapons. Yep. That's the law but, now. I, but I'll tell you what happened here, is you have a case here where this this guy fell through the cracks all the way around uh, he, there were t tons of warning signs about him and yet all of them seem to have been ignored so we're now at a point of woulda coulda shoulda you know and and we're trying to like like monday morning quarterback what should have gone on uh the fact is that we there were nobody was paying attention to this kid and they said that part of the problem was and this is very interesting that they could have, with this kid, put him in for mental observation in a hospital, except there were no mental hospitals to put him in because there weren't the funds to do it with. Okay? And they couldn't just simply arrest him and hold him because he was a danger to the community. But they could admit him for psychiatric. And that was not possible because there wasn't enough money in Florida to take care of that sort of thing. I can't believe Or that. the age well, to buy an assault rifle could have been 21 years, a long time ago. Well, so what if it's 21 years? I mean, uh, I, well, you know, I, I, used to, I used to say about drinking, why do you have to wait to be 21 to drink? It's bad for you at any age. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're 14, you may as well drink because just as bad as if you go out and get drunk at 21. Yeah, I agree, but shooters you wouldn't have bought it. Over 21? What? Uh, in all these years, have how many of those school shooters were over 21? None. Um, uh, none of them. No. 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 So maybe this 21 thing is but, not such But a that's idea. school shooters. We have non-school shooters. And, and the reason why the well, school shootings one, are usually I'm, kids is because they're the one. This is their turf. This is the place they're familiar right. with. You know, so take, I mean, uh, it's not going to stop them. It's just like, you know, you go down the store and you get somebody to buy you a beer. I mean, it's not going to stop them, but it's the deterrent. And I believe the kid, the kid who killed in, uh, and Jeff could uh, tell us about this in Connecticut, uh, was, oh, I think he, I don't know if he was uh, under 21. Do you know, do you remember Jeff? I think he was. Re yeah. Really? He was under 21. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, Patrick. And turn on your camera, Jeff. You just lost it. Uh, uh oh. Patrick. Yeah, I, I want to go back to the matter factor too. I mean, we have all these referendums in all of our different communities, all different schools. Um, and for, like in Milwaukee, we've got a trolley that they're installing. Well, what the fuck? We're, we're wasting money on that when it could be put into better things. And I think that could be said for any community. And, no, when, you no, into, when you no. go into court or you go into a state building or you go into the Congress or you go into any uh, a, a public building, they have they have uh, protectors, these metal detectors, and they make you empty your pockets, your backpacks. Mm -hmm. And, 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 other and by the way, I always beep because yeah. there's always something on me that beeps. And I have to almost take every piece of clothing off before I realize that it's my wristband, my wristwatch band, which is metal. Right. But yeah. look what they do to bring people into those buildings to protect state and federal workers. But when it comes time okay. to protect okay. kids, how many, how many bill, how many courthouses are there in a given city? At least one. Okay. Maybe. How many schools my, are my, there? How many schools are there, Phil? At least one. No, more than that. A lot more than that. Yes. At least. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, but that's where the metal detector is in. I mean, you've got uh, the the thing is anybody that knows anything about security, if you've got <clears> a building with multiple doors, <throat> you make sure that 
most of the doors are locked and there's a main entrance and then there might be another side entrance. And mm -hmm. if you have both of the main entrances uh, fortified, I mean, Kevin brought this up in the beginning, you've got to fortify the school and that's how you do it with metal detector. That's at least the first line of defense. Yes, uh, Kevin. Let's remember, schools used to be a safe place. We never had to worry about this shit. We've never had to worry about fortifying a school. You always were able to walk right in and walk right out. And until the last 10 or 20 years, and I've been to many safety, safety meetings at schools, and especially the last you know 10 years, I was the first one to sit there, and some of these meetings that I went to, I was the only parent that showed up at them, because I had a lot of, I was I was in, you know, since 9-11, where I worked, mm -hmm. I was in a chemical building, and we had cyclone fences, then all of a sudden we had high security fences, then all of a sudden we were putting cameras around the place, then all of a sudden we were doing, uh, uh, you know, security plans, and all of a sudden, then all of a sudden I'm going, well, what are we going to do about the schools, you know, there's shootings. You know, we don't want to fortify our schools because we don't want to scare the kids and everything else. Now, all of a sudden, I'm at these meetings at the schools going, well, why aren't you putting up bigger fences? Well, we don't want to scare the kids. Well, I want you to put up a bigger fence. I want you to put barbed wire. I want you to put iron fences. Now I want you to put spikes on top of the fences. Well, and I'm now sure. they're doing that. And they have to. You're a 20-minute delay on the cameras oh, at the yeah. school in Florida. And they couldn't, they weren't getting live video, so they, uh, uh, and the cops didn't know. Again, it was, it's Phil, it's woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, well, I don't know. You know, they they don't even know. They're trying to figure out why there was a 20-minute delay between the pictures they were seeing and what was happening. Uh, you, you had your hand up, uh, um, first of all, uh, Ray, and then, then uh, uh, um, our uh, good friend, uh, uh, Tony, wait a minute. Yeah, I, I was just curious about where the majority of the guns were coming from. And there's an organization that did a study, and it was 54 uh, of the sh school shootings between 2013 and 15, even the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. uh, they know for sure, and it could be more, that 54% of the guns were obtained from the parents. The parents owned the gun. Really? Kid, kid well, in, in the case of Connecticut, that situation was, in fact, a gun owned by the mother, if yeah. I remember correctly. And, 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 they're, and that's a low ball, 54%. The other ones they can't tell because the, uh, the police wouldn't disclose the information because it was under investigation. Yeah, but it's but it's probably it's definitely more than 54%. Not yeah. properly stored or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, exactly. Not properly stored. Yeah. That, that, that goes back to the whole training thing. Phil and I were talking about that. I mean, there's such a lack of uh, um, people should be trained. If we're not, if we're not going to get rid of guns, people should it should, it should be yes. required that people go to like uh, driver's ed that takes weeks Absolutely. and weeks. I did that. I used to have guns. I used to hunt all the time with my dad <clears throat> or my grandfather, and I went to a, a I, th I went to school for like three months to learn how to use guns. Yeah, I had respect. The guns were locked up. The ammunition was locked up. Yep. Two different places. No one was going to get hurt. Um, but people don't know this. People no, don't know. No, people this. are they're, they're nonchalant about it. Well, I mean, it's, you know, you really you, you, you really bring up a bigger you really house. bring up a better question, and that is if a lot of these kids are getting their guns because they stole them from their parents or they were in the in the in their home uh what do we do about that you know uh we don't have to worry about the kid going out and buying a gun he knows where he ha where he can get his hands on one patrick well you start prosecuting the parents i mean that's just that negligent parenting i mean when i was a kid even with that idiotic biological farm donor piece of shit of a father that i had <laughs> Everything was locked up, and yeah. I went through hunter's safety and all of that. But the point is, all of the weapons that were in the house, as negligent as he was with everything else, fucking weapons were locked in a cabinet. You couldn't get to them, period. Yeah. That was the end of the story. And as Ray said, the ammunition was stored in a separate place 
where you, I couldn't get to it. Um, I, if I could get to the weapon, I couldn't have gotten to the ammunition. Well, I mean, this kid, this kid, when he went to, to live with these foster parents, right, brought the AK-47 or whatever it was that he had with him. And uh, they decided that they weren't going to say, hey, you know, I mean, you and I would have just said, you're not bringing that in here, right? But they, right. they, their attitude was because the mother had just died and they were taking pity on the kid. Well, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to ruin that which he owns, which is his own property. But they asked him to put it in a safe that was going to be put in his room. And of course, the kid had the combination to the safe. It wasn't it was like it, it was wasn't like it was. Had, it, was it a key? It, they brought the he brought the guns. Yeah, I saw him on a different show. He brought the guns. They made him buy a safe. I he bought the safe, more. and then he had two keys. Apparently, he kept one, and he gave the other one to the to the mother and the father, thinking that there was only one key. And he had ten guns. He had ten, ten guns. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. The story just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Yes, Tony. Good news. All right, Tony. You know what I don't understand about the whole thing too with the school. What if I if I was a student in the school? How was he able to walk right through the front door? Shouldn't that school just be locked? Then? He walked out the side it door. It was the front, I thought. It was I, in the side, side door. Doors. Shouldn't all the doors just be on lockdown where they just lock them once they're in? But he pulled the fire alarm and they started coming out and he started mowing them down. Yeah. Oh, is that how was he inside already before yeah. he pulled it? Yeah, I think he was inside. Oh, oh yeah. okay, that explains that. Then. He used to go to the school, so he knew how to, you know, he knew how the system was rigged, and he knew what to do to make everyone go to where he needed him to be yeah. to shoot him. Uh, Patrick, because he knew what they did during the fire alarms. Pa Patrick, towards the end of the day, too. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, I I have a uh, friend of mine who is a uh, school teacher, and. It was sometime last week, uh, the fire alarms went off, and people were going out into the hallways, and she overheard another teacher say, I don't know that I want to go out in the hallway and be shot because of the way that that whole thing happened in Florida. Mm -hmm. So now that in the psyche of some of the teachers and the students as well, because they're pulling the fire alarm. Then it turns out nobody pulled the alarm. It was some malfunction that happened. But it, it's another thing like that. And you know, it, again, you know, you you put you put metal detectors at the doors. You've at least got some deterrent or some way of notifying people that somebody beeps. There's a, yeah. there's a problem. I mean, you know, that. then they're not going to be able to pull the fire alarm if there's stop right They have those at inner city schools in New York, like uh, in the South Bronx and so forth, the, uh, Brooklyn. Th those schools have metal detectors. Have they deterred uh, these school shootings? I wonder if they have. Yes. Well, you well, know, it's, it's, it's interesting that in New York City, which is uh, everybody used to think of as a very violent city, I don't know. Have we had any no, school shootings any. here? No. One of the one of the I, uh, the, the, metal, the guys at the in the, the in the room at in uh, mm. Trumpy's little listening session the other day had uh, from D.C. And D.C.'s not you know the it's not the funnest place to be in one of those high schools there. They had he said he had uh, metal detectors in his high school, and he said that at least they know that once everybody's behind the metal detectors and in the hallways. They're, they feel a little safer knowing that yeah. everybody at least has plastic in there. Yeah. And they know that when the alarm goes off, that there's no metal running around in there, and they can feel a little safer back there once everybody's gotten inside the hallways, and they feel a little safer that there's no knives and there's no guns. And if something goes off, they can feel a little bit better that at least they know that, you know, whatever's going on inside the rooms and inside the hallways... Yeah, well, you know, I had the, you know, I just brought this up and it suddenly hit me. I can't remember uh, a major school shooting no, neither in, I. in New York, uh, in New York, in New York, in New York City. 
Uh, and this yep. is a city where we are very strong on no guns. There's still a thing called the Sullivan Law, which if you just have a gun and you're caught with it in the commission of a crime, you go away for at least, what, a year, two years as a minimum sentence just for having the gun. So maybe New York has the answer, and we haven't even started looking at New York. You would think this was where schools would be getting shot up all the time. It's crazy, though. I have a friend in New York who was, uh, had a home invasion. And he had a, a bodyguard, and the bodyguard wasn't there, but his gun was. Yeah. And he thwarted the home invasion. It was all on video. Mm -hmm. He showed the video to the cops, and they arrested him because it, the gun was not in his name, even though it, it he didn't well, do anything uh, to bring this home invasion on except be very wealthy. No, but, but, uh, but, he, but he did something wrong to get arrested. Yes, because he yes. took the gun that was there that belonged to, uh, that was registered to the bodyguard Mm -hmm. and used it to thwart the uh, home invasion and okay. uh, and that was his that was his but, crime again another what it could have another another you know no, no. and the NRA actually uh, d defended him mm -hmm. he, well, of course the NRA would defend him the NRA would right. defend a turd coming out of someone's ass if it looked like a gun yes <laughs> Patrick I Long gun? <laughs> <laughs> Long gun, yeah. Patrick. The only shooting we've had in Milwaukee that come close to a mass shooting are... <laughs> What is all that noise? Hold on a second. Who's making all that noise? Oh. Uh, okay. There was somebody making some kind of scratching noise here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we had the sick temple shooting back in 2012. Yeah. Where there was a guy that came in and he assumed that the sick temple was lost. And he thought he was killing uh, Muslims. And that was that's the extent that we've had because the majority of the schools in the Milwaukee mm -hmm. area and the suburbs surrounding, we've all got metal detectors. And I remember back in the in the nineties when that stuff was getting put in, everybody felt that it was, you know, now we're turning into an inner city type of thing. Yeah. Well god damn it, you eliminate like you said, New York, it, there's no mass shootings in school. There haven't well, been in Milwaukee. Yeah. I mean it can't happen. Now let's ask another question. How come a lot of these shootings take place in Florida? I mean, we had the nightclub shooting. I mean, we're talking about the mass shootings, the nightclub shooting. We had this shooting. I think there have been a couple of other incidences in Florida. Why is Florida more prone than New York? You would think New York, we'd be, you know, just shooting each other up in front of schools all the time. It's the heat. <laughs> you think it's the heat? I think it's, I think it's the gun laws. Yeah. I think it's the gun laws. New York City, you have very stringent gun laws, and... Uh, uh, you don't have nearly the kind of gun crime that they have in Florida. I think there's only a three-day hold in Florida, and and they're and they're pretty laxed about it, from what I've read. Yeah. What is it about? Yeah. You know, there's a larger question to be asked here because we're, you know, a girlfriend said to me tonight. She says, "Boy, you know, I hate living in these times. You know, it's just getting it's getting terrible. What is it?" about us that has gotten this bad. In other words, it, it, it this wasn't happening when I was in school. No, this wasn't no, happening when a lot that. of you, when all of there you were in so school. There's so much divisiveness, and it's no, been this no. way for about 20 no, years. No, this has it, nothing to do not with divisiveness. This has to do with morality. This has to do with, with people shooting guns, Phil. It's not about well, the divisiveness in the country. You know? I disagree, Alex. I, I think Phil is on to something there with you look at politics and you look at how fucking vitriolic it is between Democrats, Republicans, and even within the parties. It's and people think, in general. Yes, I, I think, yes. It, I don't think it uh, has uh, to uh, be specifically uh, with guns. You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you, Patrick, because I remember in growing up a lot of enmity when it came to political parties, when it came to political thought. I remember a time in this country where we had the communist scare and people were losing their jobs and everything. It was almost like it was the it was the political version of the Me Too movement. You know, it was like every other day they were finding, oh, you are a member of the Communist Party, now you can never work again. 
I saw that kind of divisiveness back then. I saw it really horribly bad back then. It's among elites, though. It wasn't among the masses like it is now. Well, it's only because we have mass uh, mass communication. You know, right. then you only had radio and you had uh, some television, and uh, that was it. Now you've then, got the internet, where any idiot can do uh, you know, can, exactly. can lose somebody their life's profession by simply uh, tweeting. Well, you may be or become president there. by simply tweeting. Well, you may be onto something there. Uh, on, on a nicer note, you know the the fact that I wasn't here last night. Mm -hmm. uh, that was I a nicer first, note. Yeah, yeah. You have to admit. I have to admit I took that. First place journalism. Huh? I took first place journalism with this shot. With your through the leg shot, huh? Yeah. Well. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Great. And that means it's the second second uh, month in a row I took first place. I, that's because and you're the because you, the you're show. the uh, one of only two guys showing up to these club meetings. No, 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 there's about forty altacacas there, and, you know, and you know, and and they they've been having the you know the, they've been the cock at a walk, uh, and and so now here I am the new and, guy. And what, and what do you get for this? Do they they give you money? Uh, do you get a job at a newspaper as a photographer? I get, uh, I get criticism. Uh, oh, oh great. Well, you know, you can come here for that, and you get that. For, you don't have to travel for that. You don't need a camera. They have professional judges, yeah. photo judges. Each time, there's a different judge. So each one's looking for different things, and they, you know, say, uh, you know, what they like, what they don't like, how you can improve. And, you know, so far, I haven't gotten any criticism, but uh, give me time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So how, how long ago did you take that picture? Uh, I, I took it a couple of years ago. Oh, so really what you get to do is take the best pictures out of maybe several thousand that you've taken over the last uh, well, I can 20 years. Them, but they, you, you submit them for different categories. Yeah. Uh, color prints, journalism, uh, uh, you know, a number of other uh, categories. Yeah. They have projected prints. But um, uh, so anyway, I, I use that one and... Uh, Somebody wrote, uh, uh, Forbin wrote uh, uh, a thing here. He says, subtext of bowling for Columbine was that America is living in a fear culture and the news media is basically fire stories about danger around every corner. Uh, I, I do agree with that to this extent. That's just what I said. Well, no, you were saying yeah. that the divisiveness was causing it. What, what he's saying, and I, I tend to agree with... Me is that the trouble with the media is they gin up everything, and so people become, feel they're living in a more fearful world than they actually live in. You know, I mean, how many people living, you know, in small towns in the United States were afraid ISIS was going to attack them because they watched, you know, CNN and Fox and MSNBC uh, when there was no realism to that? But all I know is we're living in a time where we shouldn't even have to be talking about this. I mean, what is so different about today uh, outside of the mass media? Now, maybe we have to think about social media and things like that as, as the trigger point on this. Do you, you think know? that maybe the kids today, I would want to be a kid today. Do you think the, do you think that bullying is going on to social media? Like maybe they pushed them to a, a well, certain Well, point? I mean, I the, 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 this stuff d does amount to bullying. There's no question about that. Because I was reading, didn't they say, they were saying that the kids could be harder today because now once you leave school, they're still connected. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been I've been dealing with that the last couple of weeks right now with my with my daughter. Really? Oh, really? Information overload. Yeah, I yeah, deal with it all the time too. Wow. Technology. I never thought technology would be this great, what, what, but it also could be dangerous because these very, kids can sit on and Google very, how to make a very bar. Very powerful. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's this crazy. Yeah. These kids fret over how many Instagram followers they have. And then people leave them nasty notes on Instagram, and they get all upset, and they mess with each other. Can I ask you guys a question? And Snapchat. Well, that's yeah. what this show's about, Tony. By the way, Tony is growing a beard, if you may notice. Uh, yeah, look, and does anybody notice that I'm, I'm that I'm growing one, too? If, if she saw me like that, she'd kill me out. Wait a minute. We've oh. never seen this mother, and Tony, we don't She's believe... in the other room. I'm upstairs. Uh, no, no, don't no, believe... We, we, we think... We, we, we think it's... She, like, we she think, can barely walk. We think, I'm watching her right now. We, well, listen, we no, think, she, it's, she, we think okay, of you kind of like... You right. might be like Norman Bates, and she's stuffed. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> she's stuffed, 
and she's in a rocking she chair happy. down in the basement. Oh, no, wait a minute. You can't. I, I bought her the Alexa thing so she can call my Aunt Barbara so they talk hands-free because she can't really dial. So I was in there. They were cutting the family up before. It was great, Alex. Cutting really? the family up. Man, we were there talking about you. <laughs> See, that's what's t- lives in a hotel. T- cutting, <laughs> cutting the family. No, you know what I was going to ask you? Do you think kids today, Alex, are not, uh, I don't want to sound rude, are not really adjusted mentally? Because no. there's so much technology that they don't know how to solve You know, uh, I think I think social media has made them antisocial. I mean, huh? uh, uh, um does that make sense to anybody when I say that? I, I, mean, I, because, so I, I can think the because you don't have to you don't have to deal with people one on one. You just write to this anonymous person. You know. Yeah, yes. Uh, I, I have two teenage. Well, one's twenty and one's uh, fifteen. I've been dealing with this for twenty years. Uh, social media, yeah, big problem. Um, they don't have to deal with each other one on one. They they don't spend as much time with each other even if they do they spend it playing games and not really communicating much and and the other thing and and just go with me on this for a second all of these school shooters if if you're psychotic or whatever they are and you play these first person shooter games for hours and hours a day and you are also nuts I think mm-hmm. that contributes to these kids going in and shooting people up because they get good, they get good at shooting on the on you know on the console and then they go in. Well, and I got to I got to disagree with you to this extent. Uh, I play video games. Uh, yeah, I play, and I, the only one I like are first person shooter games. That and ones where you have to figure out the situation and find the thing that's in the thing and so on. Well, but for, exactly. but first but you're person not insane. Shooter, you know, it's like if well, insane, no, I'm not insane. And on top of that, I'm probably one of the most nonviolent human beings I know. And yet, right. I love these first-person shooters. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that if you are insane and you're a psychopath mm-hmm. and you can't tell, and there's no difference between you shooting somebody on a screen and shooting a real person because you yeah. just don't have a conscience or you're nuts, then I just I think it contributes. But maybe you know, I might be wrong, yeah. but they. I know they all play these games. By the way, you know, Ray, you got a point there. It's part of the parenting thing, too. Mm -hmm. You probably go to your kid and tell them, you you know, you constantly pound into them, this ain't real, this ain't real. Just like when our parents would tell us, you know, the Three Stooges ain't real. But I think the reason, the very very reason that I enjoy it, the very very reason reason why I enjoy it uh, is because it isn't real, because I can do this. And it, it has nothing, I know it has nothing to do with the reality. Now, I I can't imagine a kid not feeling the same way, that he's not. Yeah, I can't kid, get that either. You know. But there's a oh, small, there small percentage of kids who are crazy. Yes. <laughs> and, and they should be not playing these games. It's like, and there's it's no like one there if, to you're tell an alco- real. if you're not an alcoholic, it's okay to have a drink. Yeah. If you're an alcoholic, you can't have a drink. Yeah. It's Patrick's had his hand up, and I pa- 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 right Patrick has yeah. his hand up, and I don't want any other part of his body yeah. to get paralyzed. So let him put it down and talk. <laughs> um, I think there, there's some validity to the, the first person shooter type game, and it has to go also to the parent. When I was parenting my ex kids. We made sure that the games they were playing were appropriate for their age. Mm-hmm. The young now there was Call of Duty. Okay. Out. Yeah. However, the youngest kids were not allowed to play Call of Duty because it wasn't appropriate for them. Part of it is, as a parent, you should know your kids and their personalities, and if you know that your kid is a little off kilter or need some medication to keep them so that they, they're not psychotic, mm-hmm. you get those games out of the house. Now, again, right. just like the metal detector, you right. can't keep the kid from playing at a friend's house, but you can do your damnedest within your own home yeah. to keep the kid from playing certain games or whatever that they may construe to <coughs> be re- because yeah. they are not on the same level that we yeah. are. Right. Um, uh, yeah. We've been joined by Tim. Tim, do you have anything to say about what we're talking about? 
Tim? Are you there, Tim? Well, he called up and he's online, but he's I guess he's listening somewhere else. Uh, okay. I just thought I would involve him in the conversation. Yeah. So what so what you're saying then is almost like do you think do you think maybe the parents had to see that this kid wasn't all there and they never really No, they kn- got it, him the proper it, it, help. Wasn't, that, you know, it, this was kind of like um uh this was a kid who everybody knew had something wrong with him. I mean, yeah, gotta, it, 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 there wasn't remember, it, parents that he was with were fresh. They were only a few months into it. His real parent had died, and his, oh, okay. his step parent yeah. had died. Oh, so he was and the the parent that had just taken him in were only a few months into it. Yeah, they were just helping out. They were just you know taking him in and helping out. The right. kid that the kid that brought him home befriended him. Because he was, he was being, you know, uh, uh, you know, cast off by the other kids, and he was trying to help him, and brought him into the house and said, you know, this kid needs some help. But he went, he went, brought him home and yeah. said, you know, can we take him in? And the parents were trying to help him, and you know, didn't they were kind they, of just they also into sent it. him to a school for troubled kids. I mean, yeah. that's how how deep this deeply seated this problem was, and yeah. yet nobody was doing anything about it. And you know we we have to even bring the FBI into this, who again you know d- saw the warning signs. But I think again it has to do a lot of it has to do with the fact that you can't just arrest somebody because you think they might be dangerous. Right. That's not a crime. You can put them in a, in a you can put them on a mental hold. Yeah. They, they have a thing in England. I can't remember what it's called, like a section eight or something like that. Where you can yeah. section eight somebody and put literally put them in a mental hospital for for thirty days because you either find them dangerous or you find 50, them a danger to 50. themselves, huh? Here it's only fifty welfare and institutions code, and it's a seventy-two hour hold. But that's yeah, all. That's what he has to do something, doesn't he? But then uh, he has to do gotta something. Got to be a, a danger to yourself or others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, but then you have him for 72 hours. He gets out, he grabs his rifle and goes to the school and kills people. They take him to Alameda right. and put him into a, into a hallway. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's j- the other problem with the 51... Fi- I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't, oh, I didn't that's raise a, my hand. Well, well quickly. that's the other problem... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go, it's, Ray, yeah. say what you're going to say and then we'll go to Jeff. The problem with the 5150s, like you say, they take him to Alameda and put him in a hallway. Sometimes these 5150s do more damage to people because because they stick him in these places and then and they make him sit around for eight hours before anyone does anything and they're in like in a, a room with no windows and then it just gets worse and worse and by the time they get out of there they're a complete mess yeah they're like worse off than they were when they got in yeah but Jeff yeah. Uh, I think one of the things that we ought to recognize is and I have I have four granddaughters okay mm-hmm. and I, I can't see any of them having any interest and having a gun and and shooting anybody or anything like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. But anyway, however, when I was a boy, I was interested in guns. I I also, you know, I had a little zip gun, which was totally illegal stuff in New York. And when, when kids are at a certain age, they're they're kind of organized to do crazy things. They they really want to do them, and and now you're talking about uh, children who are maybe they're 21 years old, 22, whatever their age is. Oh. They're angry, crazy people, and they shouldn't have those kind of weapons in their house. In their bedroom, yeah, okay, in any kind of a lock and an unlock. This stuff is inappropriate for these children, and and it's not a question of whether it's the 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 people are the or the mothers and fathers or the uncle who's you know teaching yeah. them how to do this stuff. We've, we've got to really stop doing that. Well, also, we've got a real problem, too, when you think about it, that some people just shouldn't be parents. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, and, and, and yet, if we were to try and make a law saying, you have to take a test to make sure you'd be a good parent before you can be one, everybody would go nuts and crazy, you know. So, My God, it's, that, that's a good point because you're right. I, I, I don't understand how some people right. are parents. I, I, yes. Some of these schools. Their, par their parents, be, uh, they, sorry, their parents because they could, be parents. They, they parents cause they could squirt sperm into a pussy. Exactly. That was about as, if, as difficult <laughs> as, as it was to do. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. Well, I used to deer hunt. And then I decided I wanted to be paralyzed. Yeah. And, okay. and one thing, one thing I decided on that, I was pretty much done with deer hunting. And I had an M1 carbine, which is a World War II mm -hmm. uh, weapon and was used early in Vietnam. And um, I had no use for it anymore. And I got rid of it before I moved in with my ex and her kids for two reasons. One, I was never going to use it again. And two, I didn't want the kids around it. Mm -hmm. And I would do the same thing today. Now, I just got done like a half hour ago saying yeah. I myself would buy an AR-15 because I like it. However, if I was involved with somebody or had kids, there's no fucking way that I would have one of those around until they were out of the house. Because you don't know what they're doing. Even if it is locked up, you need to, you need to make sure that your kid... So what, what, well, what? you, you so, said you like those guns because you like the way they look. Well, I like Jennifer Lawrence because of the way she looks, but I can't have her because I wouldn't be responsible. So, yeah, you I, know. I you had enough money to buy. <laughs> uh, uh, Phil, let me ask Lock you this. because uh, Phil, you know, Phil's been dozing off there. Uh, no, safes are relatively inexpensive. Uh, this one was 800 but you can buy a really good gun safe for about $300. Right, you should have said, yeah. Yeah. And nobody nobody knows the combination, but you, they're not going to get into it. You know, I just just realized yeah. Phil looks like. Who? Beretta? No. Beretta? I was thinking of the Kojak. No, no. Who did, anybody see it? Let me see his face. Uh, Is it uh, Jackie Gleason. No. Uh, <laughs> Lu Lewis, Jimmy Cagney. Lewis Black. Lewis Black, yes. <laughs> you do look like Lewis Black. <laughs> he does look like Lewis Black, doesn't he? But you don't talk like him. You got to do with the fingers. With the fingers. Ah, I got the goddamn guns. Tommy, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Kojak. Uh, you're Kojak, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, he's Patrick, more... I used to have an. I used to have one of those M1s. Yeah. And I had. I was a thirty odd six, and I had a. And I had several shotguns. But I gave them to my dad for the same reason. I didn't. I didn't need. I wasn't hunting anymore. So my dad just keeps them in his gun locker up in the mountains where he lives. Well, when I, I was in the Navy, we I were, didn't want him in the house. When I, we were I, we were in the Navy, you had to take uh, a gun course, uh, take uh, do a thing with guns during boot camp, which mine was only a couple of weeks because I was in the reserves. Uh, but we had a went out to a shooting range and shot at targets, and I was uh, I was considered very good. I, I don't know what they call it, a master shot or something like that. But I, I was rated as just being very good at it. I, for some reason, sharpshooter. Sharp sharp I knew how to pick up a gun, point it, and somehow no, you know, get it so the bullet would hit the target. I think they call it a sharpshooter. Something like some that. Pe some people are just good shooters. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Alex. Yeah. Oh, there's Tim. We wondered what happened to you, Tim. There. I had to walk in the other room. There we go. There's. Back. Wait. Hold on. There a second. There's is. a picture of Lewis Black. Is is that Lewis Black? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now yeah, that's Lewis. Now, oh, t t yeah, yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, Alex. <laughs> oh my yes, God. But how come that Lewis one. Black looks like that guy from uh, Weinstein? And he doesn't look like Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> No, it, nobody looks like Harvey Weinstein or wants to look like Harvey Weinstein. Yes, Tim. Tim, finally. We haven't heard from you in a while, Tim. Oh, our schedules change, and we're usually on the go or whatever about this time. I did have a. Has anybody listened to the radiologist describe the type of injuries that an AR-15 bullets do to oh, a human body? Rips it apart. A normal gunshot wounds. The, the X-ray will show like a slice. Or, a, a, you know, like a line of the bullet going through the organ. 
with 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 a bullet traveling 2180 miles an hour there is literally no organ left it's like somebody blew up a bomb inside the organ yeah. it's like it's like a, a weapon of mass destruction yeah. if you're going to shoot somebody not to, not over. to not to win a war it's meant to kill everybody on the in front of you yeah, yeah. literally yeah, just blow to pieces the guy. so, so, so I, I, we have you know hey, Phil do you know what the United Nations Nations Convention of Prohibitions or Restrictions on the Use of Certain Conventional Weapons, which may be deemed to, to be excessively injurious or to have indiscriminate effects. But is the two two three round a NATO round? I don't know. Or is it uh, because those guns fire two different bullets? One's called a two two. Well, this was a high, these were high velocity. One is a five That's, five something. Uh, and uh, well, look, come on, we're, we're getting the two. The United Nations bans. Napalm, I don't know about daisy cutters, but I think these AR-15s should not be used by anybody the other than law enforcement. The uh, M-15 uses one of two rounds, and I don't know enough about them to know which one is a NATO-approved round. Uh, I can look it up. Yeah, it, it, I, well, it, it doesn't matter what you approve. They all kill. That's the point. You know? Well, some of them when, when the, more, I can't, I can't but, believe no, it. No, 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 other people survive gunshot wounds if they're not high velocity. Low velocity, you can survive mm -hmm. those, have really bad damage, but nobody survives if they're hit. It split you, the, the little girl's spine. It blew the yeah. organs apart. It's you know, just, you're on NATO list. Both of those, the 5.56 and the point two. <clears> which are the two rounds that they use in the M4, M16, uh, M15. Uh, the, these are uh, NATO approved, along with 9 millimeter for hand. If, if, if a private citizen wants one of these, it should be in lock and key at a gun, at a, at a gun range. And you can either rent it at the gun range, or it's like a timeshare. Well, this is, well, you're but you can't it, have it, it at home. Uh, what, what, you're, what, you're, what you're talking about, Tim? Guess. Tim, what you're talking about is what they do in England, where if you want to, uh, if you're a hunter and you want to have a hunting rifle, it's fine for you to have right. one, but you have to belong to a hunting club, and the gun, the rifle, is kept at the hunting club. Well, and, I'm glad and, you don't live in England. And, same and thing then, in France. Then, exactly then, the it's same. the guns. But, no, I mean, but, they do the same thing in France. You say yes, uh, yes, France? they do. My wife's fr French. I, I know they. If you if you want to hunt, you have to keep your arms at the hunting club, and if you shoot on a shooting range, you have to keep them there. To yeah. keep it in your house, you have to jump through all kinds of hoops and have it, good reason it, for it, it. That would also <laughs> reduce accidental deaths, which are extremely high, and some suicides. And suicides. Oh yeah, we didn't even get into the accidental deaths from a gun being in a house. We and didn't get so into the suicides. What Tom wants to do is. He wants to arm a million of the teachers. Yeah. And who's anybody good? The, these are these people that come in to shoot the schools up. They're going to love a fight because they they want to commit suicide by cop anyway. Now you can track down the teacher. You first do your research, see what teacher has the gun, then you go right after the teacher. It's not going to solve anything. It's just ridiculous. Well, I mean that 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 is you know he, what what what. Uh, Unfortunately, what our president is trying to do is to try to look good in this situation when for days he was looking horrible. I mean, his first he's, speech he's again. Trying to sell more gun he's trying to sell more guns. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is is that he he didn't he's trying to look for something to make him sound like he knows what he's doing. And this is just a stupid answer to the problem. You know. You know, did and, you guys watch did you watch the kids when they talked to the president? Yep. In a little list he had in his hand. You, you know, did, they staged and vetted those people just like they do their rallies. That yeah, was, we they didn't invite you? the protesters there. The people that are speaking out, they vote. They brought people in. Each, several of them gave great praise to the great job Trump's doing. You think that he that. gives a damn what the NRA says or the FBI Oh, he does. sure does. Yeah, he sure does. The NRA well, he doesn't million million dollars. Dollars. especially is it something uh, like election. how many million dollars did they how many millions of dollars did they give his Thir election campaign 35 Thir 35 million for 35 million well yeah. and, and they're looking into russia having given somehow be funding the nra it as well. russia well you know the 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 fbi yeah. got him elected as well but you know the other the but, thing is what, what, what is that supposed to be? 
look, he came up with three or four very good points that no one else has done, and why not give him credit? Well, what, 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 no, but they weren't good points. They weren't, they weren't good points. These were points now, that have been no, – no, these ago. points have all been made before, Phil. Yes, but he's actually and, and before them. before it. So did Obama. So well, I I think George Bush called for background checks. Well, but, I think well, you we, know he he's he's, he, he's the last one in a long line to ask for background checks. Well, That's, I think that this one he'll get it done. Yeah, where sure. No one else was yeah, seriously yeah, asked like he's getting him. everything else done. Yes, Patrick. I, I just can't help but laugh at. at what Kim said with they invented those people. That's the same argument that some on the right are making about the students. Mm -hmm. that they're not really students. That no, 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 no. It's true. I'm not saying that they, they paid the people to, and conscripted them or paid them to lie. I'm just saying they only invited people like they vetted them, which he never vetted any of his employees. Why does he have to vet these people for these reality show sessions well, well no no i question i questioned last night whether some of these people had not been vetted because they had been meeting with them beforehand because you would think that in a very tense atmosphere uh, of this discussion of this kind of discussion that somebody would have just called out trump and nobody yeah, did you're an asshole. and nobody did, you did. see how they talked to well, did you see how they talked to rubio that's what yeah, would have happened. That was good. Exactly. That's well, good example. Happened. Very good example. Out. And that was unvetted. That a was unvetted. A few of them did call him out. <clears throat> yeah, what? No. A few of them did, you know, call him out. But they, they all were. But those were the you know, ones in the audience. Was, I'm not saying that they were scripted. I'm just saying that they got some people that they thought. They weren't picking any of the people that were outspoken protesters. But how about all these? Right, were, how about how about these right wingers who who tried to dismiss that kid as an actor who uh, that, from that, oh, yeah. in the school? That's been, that's been debunked as fake news. Oh, of course, yeah. it's been debunked as fake news. But you know, maybe the Russians started that one. We don't know. Well, actually, really, the, they're, they're looking into Those that. But, but the Russians, <laughs> they push it. They push it. They don't start it always. Yeah. But they push it. Uh, uh, they Patrick. Push it. Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, and, and I mean, and yeah, I mentioned last night about the CNN thing. That was really no different than what Trump had at the White House, in that they had a select number of people on the stage that were the one confronting Rubio and the two other people, and then uh, the sheriff and the NRA rep. And I, you know, both of those things were staged, and they weren't. Uh, they weren't as organic as, like I said last night, the protest. I think the only real thing in the last few days was the protest. I think the CNN town hall thing was bullshit. Because it was yeah. CNN trying to pat themselves on the back. Yeah, I, I think yeah. CNN, uh, they, they loved themselves and Trump loved themselves. I think both of those things were bullshit. But the protest at... It, it, uh, in Tallahassee, that was a real thing, and that was... It was organic. It was organic. It was real. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about the boycott? What boycott? I like it. Well, you they've already got the bank. The bank is going to no longer offer the NRA card, a visa card. Oh, bank the visa. bank in Omaha, I believe. I forget the name of the bank. Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, and also, the, uh, the, the rental car companies are not going to give uh, uh, discounts to NRA members anymore. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> pa pa uh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Patrick. Hey, can uh, I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony. Tony won't have I was hand. thinking about this because my sister's a teacher, right? Yeah. Can they do this to the students? Can the students sue the school? The lack of security and kind of, uh, you, they, is there a lawyer? Uh, yeah, there well, a lawyer let me put it this way. Happen. Anybody can sue anybody for anything as to whether you're going to win it, as to whether there's going to be a real case. That's going to be another question. Altogether. Can they sue Congress in the school? Say, listen, you're not you're putting us in jeopardy. And, uh, you can't you can't sue Congress. Uh, they're, they're pretty they're, as a whole. They're they're harder to <laughs> sue. What about the, the NRA? They're harder to sue than a corporation. What? What about the NRA? Can they put something against them? Maybe get them in the court? Yeah, but they've got so much money that you you couldn't find enough people with money to fight that one. 
I mean, and you, I think you're talking I about some pretty powerful gets, forces here. I think, uh, I, 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 you know, they, they, there should be some kind of suits uh, where uh, that school was concerned that maybe uh, these, these enough wasn't serve. done to protect the school or whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can sue and you can sue till you sue out your ass. It doesn't bring the loved one back. That's the problem. No, no. You but know, I'm just saying maybe uh, you know, if you hit him in the pocket, it might help wake him up. Well, but, but that, that does raise another specter, Alex. Yeah. It can be used to push your your uh, legislative and policy agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like that's it took a long time with cigarettes, but we finally got there. Well, yeah, but you know, how many people are going to have? Well, in that case, how many people had to die before we stopped cigarettes? Yeah. Uh, well, you, know, you know, we used to say in my old hometown. Uh, when we didn't have enough stoplights, we how many people have to get killed in an intersection before they put a stoplight? Yeah, well, I don't know why cigarettes were so bad for you when nine out of ten doctors uh, prescribed <laughs> uh, 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 approved of Luckies. I, I I never could quite figure that one out. Where do they find these nine out of ten irresponsible doctors to yeah. endorse they were all Lucky Strike? The one guy was the guy we should listen yeah. to. Um, <laughs> You know what? They only they only uh, interviewed and polled the people that do the fake research for the company. Yeah. However, that's probably who they. I wonder if if you know we, we live in an age of absolute political correctness, <laughs> which which used to be the domain of the Republicans and now is the domain of the liberals, uh, who I also likewise hate because uh, they're not lefty enough for me. But I'm wondering, I'm Alex, wondering, I'm wondering this next Christmas if somebody's going to protest to Turner Broadcasting for running a Christmas story because it's all about a kid who wants a Red Ryder rifle for Christmas. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that one. Uh, and by the way, do you see that it is, it is a matter of wrapping things up? Today, uh, uh, it came out that they're accusing... They were it, well. The headline read, and it, it kind of was misleading. The headline that I read it said, "Mark Cuban under fire for sexual misconduct at Dallas Mavericks workplace." But, yeah, it wasn't but, me. It wasn't him. But it turns out this was from Sports Illustrated, who then wrote in a separate story, "Mark Cuban was not among the Mavericks executives accused of sexual harassment." What they're saying is he was responsible because he owns the outfit. Right, and he didn't stop it. Right, and he didn't he didn't stop it, which makes me question how responsible. Well, this is a discussion for another day, but how responsible is a human being for that when he's running that and a dozen other companies, and he has HR departments, and he has people he holds responsible? How responsible does he become in that hey, atmosphere? I, hey, Alex, you know how to measure that? Uh -huh. How much of the profits does he get? That's how responsible he is. Well, I mean, ultimately, I mean, if he's getting, them, if he's getting ultimately, the profit, finger is going to the finger is going to be pointed at him. But how responsible really is he? If some he got rid of somebody who was sexually harassing people and fired him, he'd been there many years. Fired him. He went over somewhere else. I can't remember where to work. And within two months, was fired for the same thing. Oh so, God. so you know, and this is the main guy they're complaining about, and all these complaints. Hey, listen, another. This has been. We've had some great shows the last uh, week or so, uh, and I, part of it, of course, has to do with the fine people of the panel and uh, Ray Renati, who's been calling almost every night. Ray, we really appreciate that. And of course, You're welcome. Th there's always there's always Phil, who adds a little <laughs> juice to any conversation. And I want to see you using your fingers a little more, so you look like uh, like uh, Lewis Black. Ah, it's, uh, 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 it's the guns. <laughs> yeah. uh, Patrick, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure. Tim, good to hear from you again. Jeff, yep. glad you're back in this part of the woods. Kevin, you, uh, you got a heart of gold. Love you. Just love you. And of course, Tony, as always, just remember that Jerry Falwell died about four or five sorry, years ago. And who died yesterday was Actually, Billy Graham. Billy Graham, Billy Graham, who used to run the Fillmore Auditorium. So that's, I just thought we'd put that in there. 
<laughs> anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, will you? Okay, so they can all see you uh, going away. All right, that's our citizen panel. And man, were they a good citizen panel tonight. Anyway, uh, that's it. Let me hang up on everybody because I got to do this because the next people have to use it. And the next people, as you know, are of uh, Jack and Amy. Yes. Uh, and they have a thing called the intersection. And then later on at 1 o'clock in the morning, Connections will be here. They're here until uh, uh, for about an hour and a half. And then we're back here tomorrow night at, uh, at, at, at let's see, we start at uh, 9.30 with the exchange with da uh, Damian Chaplin, followed by me. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. <laughs>